Hello and welcome to the battle report for the Second Battle of Scotland, which is occurring during the Winter 1740 turn. This is the first regular battle of the campaign. This battle takes place in Scotland between England and the Jacobites after the England's, uh, English troops have re-entered the uh, Jacobite territory during uh, normal movement. Battlefields from the second edition <coughs> Uh, rule book and it uh, consists of a creek pretty much going down the middle of the uh, road uh, battlefield with a town and a walled uh, field armies consist of three 16 casting SPs for the Jacobites since there's only three cast uh, three SPs in this battle they only uh, they do not get any artillery. And they also have their king and a sub-general. English have six infantry and one and a half cav. They have three line infantry and a grenadier and artillery in this brigade. Second brigade they have two line units and then they have a third brigade of all the cavalry. 8 casting and a 4 casting with a king and 3 sub or 3 brigade generals even though there's only 2 shown. Since we're playing on a tabletop that is narrower than standard, uh, we have uh, adjusted the setup areas for each army to account for that. So while uh, the setup area is smaller, uh, the distance between the two setup areas is the same as what would be on a normal five foot deep table. So here the uh, English are setting up their first brigade with their four infantry units in column with uh, artillery uh, uh, limbered on the road. The second brigade is uh, also going to be set up in column uh, in the central part of the battlefield. And the uh, Cavalry Brigade, which is actually uh, they're labeled as the 1st Brigade, uh, is going to be uh, set up at the far left wing of the English Army. Firstly, the Scots, since they're not as maneuverable or you know, don't have a lot of options, uh, they're just going to end up lining up pretty much in the middle of the field and uh, hoping for the best from there. So here's the overall field after the setup. The trees are just decoration, they don't actually have any effect. We also rolled for light snow, which affects both movement and the firing. The second brigade initiates the movement by moving straight ahead. The third brigade begins maneuvering, uh, trying to uh, take advantage of the road bonus, and also figuring out uh, how much movement they need to do. Since the movement uh, is reduced, normally in column they would they would move 10 inches, uh, but because of the snow they're moving 7.5. And the cavalry advances towards the creek. We counted the creek as an inch and a half wide, so it costs three inches of movement to cross. And the Scottish army, they're just they're going to shift to their left, trying to move into the uh, field. Second turn, since there's nothing else going on during the first turn, uh, begins with the 3rd Brigade again advancing down the road. go to the 1st Brigade and they cross the river. Next the Jacobites move again they shift their lines to their left uh, again not uh, really having much to do trying to make use of the cover of the uh, field. 
And then finally followed up by the second brigade, English second brigade. Again, nothing else going on, so we advance to turn three. This time, the second English second brigade begins move it, advancing uh, towards the river and beginning to cross the river. This uh, this regiment moving now in column, they they pay the river crossing penalty now, so that way they don't have to pay it next turn. Then the English third brigade advances with the artillery going to the crossroads and uh, unlimbering the gun. This also, also is the main Scottish road uh, for their board, so the English having captured it essentially uh, gives the Scots four withdrawal penalties, or four withdrawal dice to an armor withdrawal roll. And then followed up by the cavalry coming down the brigade. This is a secondary road, which has been cut off. Third Brigade, I forgot to videotape it. Essentially what they're doing is the two right brigades are advancing forward and the king's attaching to the middle and the sub-general's attached to the right. Because they're in range now, the two uh, brigades are going to charge the uh, English in column and the Scots, we didn't bother rolling for them because they're going to automatically charge regardless. Uh, normally you'd have to make a die roll to see if they could charge, but the modifiers for the Scots are so high that they charge automatically. We did get a little bit out of order here. We should have rolled on the fire on a charge, which this is it. And he rolls a 1, which is point blank range. Does 3 casualty castings, which gets into focus. The Scots uh, make the morale, but the brigade did not. Uh, he rolled a three and has to, he only had one die for morale roll and he rolled a three and he withdraws broken. The second one gets close range, does two casualty castings, the scouts make their morale roll and he rolls a four and falls back disorganized facing the enemy. So no actual melee, the, uh, they issued their fire then they fell. These are rolls for uh, casualties to the leaders which they do not have. Then we go to turn four normal movement, which starts with the uh, English cavalry advancing up the road. And the small English unit uh, wheeling in line. Then we go to the English third brigade securing the town. And there you can see the third Scottish brigade during the third turn uh, shifted again over uh, across the wall. And the remaining, uh, the Scots decide they don't like that position, so they're going to start shifting back uh, across the wall from where they came. Turn 5, the Scottish unit with the King, which was the center unit, decided to charge the English. Uh, it was far enough away that the English was allowed to get into line, and made a roll and was able to hold his fire until the Scots got right up on him point blank range. So the Scots were moved up into contact. The English shoot, do two casualties, which removes one stand and then uh, one extra pip on another stand. The Scots make their roll, and the English have one morale die for uh, for to stay, and they roll a natural six, so they get a stay. And then that last roll was for the leader casualty, and did not have any casualties. Again, the Scots are shifting. And then this one wasn't far close enough to charge, so he's just going to advance forward. And the cavalry, English cavalry, goes into line. He's a morale grade one, so that's all he can do that turn. While the second cavalry uh, decides to go into column. English infantry, the third brigade, uh, deploy into line, and they start uh, advancing against the Scottish left flank. There's some debate as to how much movement penalty a unit would would get for moving down the length of a of a river as opposed to crossing the river. Normally, it's double, but uh, 
I don't remember what we decided on. And there you can see the difficulties of terrain when it's just decoration, constantly getting shifted out of the way. And the artillery decides to limber in preparation for moving. Turn 5 melee. Again, we're with the, with the center brigade. The Scots roll two casualties, the English roll one casualty, which the Scots only roll a one, so they only have to withdraw two inches facing the enemy, and the Scots advance one. So all in all, that worked out pretty good for the English. Turn number six. Again, both units are uh, plotting to charge their units in front of them. The broken uh, English unit sat the one turn, not in contact, so he rallied uh, for disorganized. And that's where my phone died. So now we're left with the pictures. Here we have the contact after uh, the charge contact has been made, and all the English units have made their moves. Uh, the 3rd Brigade advanced. And here the charge result is the English unit in column routed and ran and uh, the English unit in line just got pushed back a couple inches. Turn 7, the English 3rd Brigade makes a charge against the Scottish flank while also moving up the remainder of their units. During the artillery phase, the medium gun finally gets to shoot, rolls for two casualties, and the morale roll, he routed off the field. Here's the charge, and the result is the unit routes, and the king, Scottish king, is captured. And that's the end of the turn, and they had enough casualties to require an army withdrawal roll, and they had to roll 12 dice, so they were running. All in all, it was a pretty fun battle. Uh, really kind of went as expected. The Scots didn't have many units, though so they were pretty much going to get enveloped regardless of what happened, so they tried to make the best of what they had. All three units that were routed ended up rallying, so in the end, the English only lost 11 castings and the Scottish only lost 15 castings, which meant they only lost one SP in the strategic map. With England winning the battle, they now share the territory with the Scottish. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. It's the first time I've ever made the battle report of this type, so if you'd like to see more battle reports like this, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you have any suggestions or tips or any other types of recommendations, I'd greatly appreciate that as well. For those interested, I got the inspiration for this style of battle report from Mini Wargaming's Beat Mat Bat Rep style of battle report. I'll leave a link in the description leading to their videos describing how to make these types of battle reports for those who are interested in making battle reports of their own. Thanks again and have a great day.